Hey guys, what's going on? This is Rick DeShane here, No One Zero, and this is my 2007 Jeep Wrangler Sahara Unlimited. And, uh, you know, comments I get are, no, that's not a 2007, <laughs> but it is. And my, my little traveling partner, I think he's back here somewhere. Where is he? There he is. <laughs> what are you doing, buddy? He likes to go for rides. This is Oi, everybody. This is my buddy. This is my good boy. Yeah. I did recently get a gift from a friend of mine, a little CB that we're going to be hooking up. Got, uh, I just finished doing this up. Did a 505 wrap, the paracord around the steering wheel. I really like it. I love the way it feels. It's, uh, it's nice. It's very, very nice. Yeah, my GPS. Just did my phone mount, which you can see. I use these little Velcro strips. Probably can't see that. The light's not great in here. But I use these little Velcro strips, and they weren't enough to hold the weight of the phone. So what I had to do is I glued the two Velcro strips together. Um, they're the outdoor uh, Velcro strips for like little LED lights and things that you put on like the side of your house. And they worked out great for a little while, but you know, when you're out on the trail or whatever, any real good rough, if the weight of the phone will just, just tears it right down. So I did, uh, end up getting a multiple USB adapter plus the always on adapter, which is this one here. This one is, this one's always on whether the car's on or not. So the battery will run it. This one is specific to the car has to be on to run things. It has a six-speed manual, so Rogue Falcon, and named after her big brother, the Millennium Falcon. You know, gotta have, gotta, gotta do my little things over here. That's my, that's my trusty traveling companion there too. Keeps us safe on the road. Gunnar, I'll show you guys that. That's pretty cool actually. You can tell I've already done a little bit of work. I had uh, uh, the uh, the limiting strap on the door here ripped off and it came around and bumped me so i uh, i just hammered it out sanded it down gave it a little bit of rust-oleum uh, uh not rust-oleum it's the ace hardware anti-rust paint which was good i did just take all these off sand down all the backs and, uh, and the back of the metal here same with the fenders took all the fenders off there's still a little bit of tape on here you can see <laughs> and uh uh, just painted the whole underbody with that paint just to inhibit some rust that was setting up. It is a 2007. It does have quite, it did have quite a bit of rust on it. And, uh, it was, it was looking pretty rough. So just went in and gave it a little bit of love for the time being until I can get it line X. This is Lagunar. He's my little Viking buddy. <laughs> Thank you. He's got a little bell on him. He's made in like Malaysia or something. I don't know. Philippines, maybe. I don't know. Let's look. Uh, yeah. Gunnar encourages you to fearlessly go wherever life may take you. Let's see. Thailand. Yep. Gunnar was handmade in Thailand. And, you know, going out to California and back, uh, she did really well. There was, uh, there was a lot of concern with it. Um, like I said, uh, we got to Colorado and the rear suspension, uh, the springs had completely squelched out. They were like rubber. I mean, you could just, you could compress them with your hands. They had gotten so soft. And so I, uh, you know, uh, we were hauling, um, a big trailer it had about 4,600 pounds in it. This little tow hitch that I installed it was actually super simple, and uh, the it just the suspension wasn't doing it. And luckily, when I stopped uh, at uh, oh man, I'm gonna forget the name. I will put the name in this video's link of the guy who did the work. Super awesome guy in Colorado. But I stopped to get the check engine light checked out uh, since we we're going through the mountains. I wanted to make sure that. I was getting the right amount of airflow and I didn't have to have anything adjusted. But uh, 
This guy in Colorado, he hooked us up, put this lift kit on it at the right price, which was super cheap. Uh, considering we're moving out to California, we are now back in Indiana. Um, and this is the little tow hitch. It's a good little, great little buy. It uh, took, you know, maybe a half an hour to install. Uh, gonna put a reco my recovery ring. I'm actually gonna drill some holes, put the recovery ring over here on this side uh, until I can get a new bumper. I've been looking at a bunch of different options, and I think I'm gonna go with a stubby bumper in the front. Um, what I'm gonna do to test that to see if I like the look of the stubby bumper is I'm actually just gonna cut the plastic bumper down because it just has a metal bracket in it that goes out to here and I'm just gonna go to the where the bracket bolts in and I'm gonna cut that down and see what it looks like and drive around with it for a little while and see if I like the look of the stubby bumper on it you know you see things on other Jeeps and you're like I don't know if it's gonna work for me or not and uh, you know I figure the best easiest cheapest way to check out if I like that look or not is gonna be to mess with this this little guy that I don't really you know, I don't really have anything invested in other than the purchase of the Jeep. So, uh, there's that. I definitely want to get some fenders. You guys will notice I don't have the, the side steps on it. Um, again, they were, they were rusting out. I've got those in the back. I can show you guys, uh, here in just a minute. I do have the A&M, uh, wheels on it. I'm not happy with these wheels only because they're the factory offset and with a 12 and a half inch tire, any guys who know anything about Jeeps knows that my pivot point's wrong on 12 and a half inch tire with the with the original offset for the wheel. So I'm looking, I'm trying to find uh, 12 inch inner offset wheels so it'll push them out a little bit further so that my pivot point will be in the center of my wheel. You can actually kind of see where, well, I don't know if you guys will be able to see this or not, but you can see where the wheel is pivoting right about here so the wheel is pivoting on this outside edge of the center and it should be pivoting from this the dead middle so but we're gonna get boy boy out of here come on baby come on let's go <laughs> come on let's go hop down you got it <laughs> do you need some help all right come here <laughs> so oh he's my little guy let's go around back okay all right so staying with some friends right now and they've been super awesome come on <laughs> he's a miniature pincher for any of those that are wondering and uh he loves to chase his birds so, here those are, and here's what they were looking like. They were pretty rough and beat up, and these have only been off the Jeep for a couple of days, and I sanded that one. That one I sanded down. Um, this one I sanded down, and then <clears throat> I used a uh, naval rust remover on it and then I sprayed it down with uh, white lithium to see how that's gonna work out but there were huge chunks of metal missing uh oh <laughs> where'd he go oh man He doesn't normally run off too far. <laughs> oh boy. Come on. Come on. Oi. Let's go. Not your house. <laughs> Come on. Let's go. In the house. He's a good dog.
Oh, doing his business. You guys don't need to see all that. Come on. In the house. Boy. Wrong way. <laughs> Wrong house, dude. All right, well, more to come from Rogue Falcon and No One's Hero. You know, we're going to do some more upgrades. When I get those fenders back off, uh, I'll show you guys the rust damage that I was removing. And if you guys have any kind of advice for me on it, I would love to know it. And uh, we can get in. Hey guys, what's going on? Um, you know, any advice on how to maybe do those repairs and stuff? When I get that up, um, I will uh, probably be here in the next couple days when it's not so gloomy and rainy. So, all right. Have a good one. Travel light.